Spirit be with you always. Let us share our confession and forgiveness together. The word is near you. On your lips and in your heart. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Amen. In our canticle hymn, um, Mary is going to be singing the verses, and we will join in on the refrains. And if I may say one thing about this song, too, um, for those who remember Frank Vera, who passed away within the last couple of years, and he used to live, sit right up there in the in Great Lutheran. Um, apparently, he sang that every Easter Sunday years ago with his beautiful piano book. Oh, oh, oh. 
You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine are wrong. Be peace, child, I am chasing. For you alone, Lord, make me rest. Our second reading is from 1 John chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this when He is revealed, we will be like Him, for we will see Him as He is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Yes, he is God. If you are comfortably able, please stand for the gospel exposition and the reading of the Holy Gospel. <laughs> Where do I begin? 
begin to tell the story of how great love can be. The sweet love story that is older than the sea. The simple truth about the love he brings to me. These words resonate with me on many levels. I did change she to he to represent God in these lyrics. The song, Where Do I Begin, was most popularly sung by Andy Williams and Tony Bennett in the early 70s. Today, I have so many where do I begin thoughts that I need to whittle down in my time with you to where the Holy Spirit is leading me and how it might best touch all of our hearts. Life circumstances that sometimes seem wider than the sea, the good, the bad, the ugly, the sad, the hopeful, the new beginnings of turning the page in our book of life. In our song today, answer me when I call, O oh God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. I wonder how we might ponder the whens, the hows, and the ifs of God. Does he hear? Will he answer? How will he answer? How will it look? Why? Probably just like those little boys I saw the other day who say, why, Mom, you know, you know, those questions that we all wonder about. For me, the serenity prayer has especially filled my heart and my lips in recent weeks. Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. In our reading from Acts that Ron led, it begins with one day. In the Lord's Prayer, we say, give us this day our daily bread. One day, when the man was at the temple, his life changed most amazingly. One day, Jesus suffered and died on the cross. It is still the Easter season, and while we say on that morning, Jesus Christ is risen today, as we have turned the pages of our lives since that Sunday, he is still risen. He is risen. In our gospel, we hear the words, as he was showing them his hands and feet, while in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. Dear friends, it is often difficult to trust God, to understand, to accept change, to find courage, to disbelieve our doubts and seek wisdom. We do wonder as we ponder. Like me, maybe you have a question on your heart. Is it God's will or is it mine? I have prayed and believed in something for the last 18 plus years. I'm still waiting, and I wonder, is it still God's plan? Is it in his hands? We wonder. In Hebrews 11, it says, faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you cannot see. Does that apply in our lives today, or is that just in heaven? Believing. I 
thankful. I think faith helps us to bring ourselves and our hearts and minds together to believe. And sometimes we struggle. Change, too, makes it difficult. How am I and how are we, as well, adapting to the things in life? For me, especially the things that I simply don't like. Uncertainty plays a role each day, right down to wondering what you might fix for dinner. And then we add to our bowl of life in Jane's kitchen that was sung way here last Sunday. All the things that we put into the bowl that we stirred up, the things done, the things left undone, our sins and our plans, how do they affect us and how do they impact others? Every day, today, there's always lots to stir up in our lives, or that get stirred up in our lives. In our second reading from 1 John, it says, See what love the Father has given us, that we, we should be called the children of God, because that is who and what we are. And then it goes on to say, Beloved, we are God's children now. It doesn't say today, but I'm going to insert that. We are God's children today and will be as not yet been revealed. We are given this day our daily bread. And we are often reminded not to be anxious about tomorrow. How's that looking out for you? Not to wonder about tomorrow? Of course we all do. Sufficient for today is its own trouble. I heard recently about a high school friend of mine whose wife had just died. In the texting back and forth with my high school friends, I learned that she'd not been feeling well that morning. He, Pat, had taken her to the hospital. She, they were told that she was full of cancer and that she had one day to live. One day. There it is again, one day. She died at 11 p.m. on that one day. Those words, one day to live, boy, they've been swirling in my brain a lot lately since I heard about this. In reality, that is just how much each one of us has. One day. How are we going to choose to live it, is my question, to myself and to all of us. Do, or did, when our feet hit the floor this morning, did we jump up and down? Well, maybe some of us didn't jump up and down. <laughs> but we're joyful. Did, was there a big cheer that said, this is the day which the Lord has made? I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it, no matter what. I know you guys don't like to ever raise your hands when I ask questions, so I won't, but if any of you did do that this morning, we would really like to know about it. <laughs> but maybe you can do it tomorrow morning. And if I decide to ask next week who has done that, you can raise your hand. It reminds me that Pat's wife Donna's one day was the ultimate reality of one day. And yet with her, 
with all of us, with disciples, with Noah and Abraham, Sarah, Rahab, Mary. There's a long list of scripture characters that had to trust and believe in turning the page on God's will and his plan for each day. <coughs> for personal reasons, I talk all about something in relationship to the story of Noah. I kind of wonder, not ever having seen rain, could you really wrap your arms about building an ark? I have asked myself over and over recently about plans, decisions, how they will play out for me and for others. I pray and I hope for wisdom and guidance and for that nudge to proceed according to God's will. Even though it means turning my page and hopefully the page of others that will be good and life changing. And to my dear friends and disciples, hindsight often plays a role for me and for us. And then we can look back on our pages and God's plans in our lives. And often, and I think you know this, that it is during those most difficult times, those times when we struggle the most, that he is there creating the tapestry of our life. We think back a few years ago when many of us were tossing around the idea of becoming a parish. Should we, shouldn't we, is that a good decision? I think it's worked out well. And sometimes we don't know until we turn the page and see how it plays out. My sense might be that Noah and the others stumbled, just as we do today and probably will tomorrow, in our unbelief and sin, in our things done and our things left undone. While I'm sitting writing this at home, I have the masters on my TV. <laughs> and I'm thinking and wondering that there's a lot of questioning going on on the course at Augusta. Which club to use? The wind, the weather was certainly part of it. How the green will play out. And I would imagine there might have been a few unsavory words when the ball didn't drop into the cup, <laughs> as they were sure that it would. I pray for all of you often, for the whole flock of both congregations. And when circumstances arise, and I'm aware by name and deed, I hope and ask God for prayers for you. I hope as well, and I ask for your prayers. I'm just as human as you are, and I stumble. But I think we have to remember that sometimes we get it right. With God's help, and maybe with the love of friends and family. And like you, when decisions are made, we often wonder why and how to adapt. I made decisions this week. You made decisions this week. You made choices. We chose because we were able to come to worship today. We choose how we will meet and greet today. I pray mightily for some of you who carry so much hurt in your hearts. I've had a little extra dose of that lately in hearing of death and health concerns of people that I love. My only hope is prayer. 
And I believe that for me, it is helping to release some of that anxiety inside myself. In our gathering song today, all things bright and beautiful, the spirited and meaningful, especially in the refrain, indeed, the Lord God made them all. Even in the darkest of our days and lives, might we see with time, prayer, and God's will to help us find understanding, peace, joy, and the blessing of letting go. I'm going to close with something I found to be most appropriate and meaningful for me of late, as well as to read the last words from our reading in 1 John today. There are days when you realize that turning the page is the best feeling in the world because you realize there is so much more than being stuck on the page where you have been. My sense is that even today, turning the page might be difficult. But maybe we can turn the page and see the things bright and beautiful that God puts in our heart and on our path. Let go and let God. Just do it. And from 1 John, it closes with everyone who does what is righteous, just as he is righteous. May God's peace, which does surpass all understanding, raise you up on eagles' wings, make you to shine like the sun, and be with you as you turn the page. Blessings and honor. <laughs>
Let us pray our office Lord's prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thee but thine own. We thank you that we can freely share what you have first given us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Alleluia and Amen. Thank you. 
together, and each as a child of God with our own full hearts. Let our prayers rise up like incense. Hold us in the palm of your hand. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For those seeking affirmation of baptism and renewal of those promises made in baptism, may we each be reminded of the water that seals us as a beloved child of God. And we ask you to help us live out those promises to all of our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. As we are called to be servants, may we follow in the footsteps of Jesus. May our lives inspire others to live like Jesus. And may we reflect your love and selflessness and bring glory to your name. Hear us, O oh God. In our world and in our country where many hearts are cold, unforgiving, and full of hate and destruction, we ask for the peace you give. Renew and refresh all of your creation with the love that Jesus brought into your world. With all praise and glory, hear us, O God. We raise you up like the wings of eagles of all those we name aloud and in our hearts. Give strength and courage and healing and rebirth as it is your will. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray. We ask, Lord, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. During that time, and in their words, the disciples said, Jesus, teach us to pray. And because he gave them a prayer, we now, as one, can come together and pray that prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Brothers, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace with one another. We've got one of the best peace givers back in town, so. <laughs> <laughs> Right. 
hope you will attend. And uh, I don't know how many more birthdays I'll have. 98 now. And uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to a birthday when I meet my Lord in heaven. I'm going to have one big birthday party with my my wife and all my loved ones. That birthday party will last forever. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. 